Hi everyone, thank you all for coming and welcome to the Children Change Columbia Project Talk 2023. My name is Diana Hermoes, I'm a British Colombian actress and an Indigenous rights advocate and it's my pleasure to be your host this evening. So we are here today to celebrate the impact of Children Change Colombia's work and share heartwarming stories that highlight the difference we're making in the lives to children in Colombia thanks to your support. Just tonight you can also meet any CCC volunteers, trustees and staff who are all easily identifiable because they're wearing the fabulous CCC t-shirts. Just so you're aware, we've divided the room into four sections according to project themes. So on my right, we have an information point where you can find out more about the sexual exploitation and forced recruitment. And on my left, we have access to education and Proyecto, Proyecto Colores. If you haven't already approached them, then I invite you to do so after this main presentation. So first, I'm kicking things off by inviting Carolina Giraldo to the stage. She is the chairwoman of Children Change Columbia. Good evening and welcome everybody. I want to begin by extending special thanks to the Hippodrome and Mr. Thomas for allowing Children Change Colombia to host our annual event, the Project Talk, in this exceptional venue. We feel privileged to be here today. To all members of the diplomatic mission, welcome and thank you for being here tonight. To all donors, volunteers, outreach team, trustees, and executive team, I cannot find enough words in English or Spanish to express our gratitude. Thank you for your generosity. We are able to continue our work believing that we are on the right path because of you. From Leicester Square in central London, I want to express my immense admiration for the communities in Colombia who we proudly call our partners. The projects that we are celebrating today represent the Colombia we want the world to see. These projects are led by brave, hardworking and creative individuals who are safeguarding the most precious treasure any society can have, its children. These young boys and girls are at risk of exclusion from education, forced recruitment into armed groups, sexual and gender-based violence, hunger, and various other forms of exclusion. You, all of you here tonight, along with those around the world and our partners in Colombia, make it possible for us to protect these children so they can dream, learn, express themselves freely and safely, and become whatever they aspire to be. Over the course of 32 years, this community has grown stronger and achieved extraordinary milestones together. We have invested 15 million in over 16,000 children and their communities, collaborating with more than a thousand individuals, both workers and volunteers. We can only express our gratitude to those who back in 1991 initiated this organization with the best of intentions. I would like to conclude by uh, quoting Wade Davis, a Canadian who later in life chose Colombia as his home and authored beautiful books about this lush corner on earth. Quote, Colombia is today at a crossroads, a country emerging from 50 years of conflict, eager to tell all who will listen that it is not a place of violence and war, but a land with a vast and rich natural heritage unrivaled in all the Americas. Were Colombians to devote even a small quota of their limitless energy and capital to the revitalization of the Magdalena, Imagine the message they could send, a river reborn at a time when the world may be falling apart, but Colombia is falling together. 
Is this true? Ah, but I finished the quote there. It is true, indeed. Colombia is exuberant like no other. And that is why, at CCC, we have prioritized the environment as one of our main cross-cutting subjects. We believe children can change Colombia for the better. And that starts by looking after our precious biodiversity. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Now we're going to move on to presenting a couple of panels, uh, one with our UK strategic partners and another one with some members of the team. So I'd now like to invite Stella Charman, Chair of Trustees of ACT International and Fabian Cardoso, COO of the Rebel Business School UK. Thank you both for joining us tonight. I'm going to start with Stella first. Is it on? <laughs> so Stella, you have been working at ACT International, which is a charity that works with child victims of war, extreme violence, and natural disasters around the world. You've been an ally of Children Change Colombia for the past three years. And thanks to your partnership with CCC, you've shared your methodologies on dealing with the post-traumatic stress of children in the Americas for the first time. Can you share more about the results of this partnership with us? Thank you, Diana. It's lovely to be here tonight because I'm really, really proud of the partnership with uh, Children Change Colombia because you were one of the first charities that we worked with who really uh, cottoned on and understood the importance of children's mental health when you're delivering any project involving children. And particularly when children are traumatized, they can't take advantage of the benefits that uh, you might be trying to offer them, like education and, uh, and other opportunities. So uh, we were just really lucky because we had three Spanish psychologists who were really keen to develop the work that they've been doing in Spain and London with children. Um, and uh, use their skills and use their language and to, to help children over in Latin America. And so we, in uh, 2020, just as lockdown hit, uh, ran um, courses for all anybody working in the projects uh, who wanted to know more about mental health and how to, to work in groups with children with trauma. And then we developed that the following year uh, two of them went out to Bogota and ran uh, a course for one-to-one -one therapeutic treatment because they just with children with the most severe trauma symptoms. So, and that was very successful. I mean, it sounds like really incredible work. And what are the next steps then? Well, just hot off the press is another training course, which is due to happen in November, uh, with one of those earlier psychologists going out once again uh, to train another cohort of people taken from all your various projects. And um, the, the key thing about the second uh, course is also involved will be, we hope, four people from the first course who have been using uh, the therapeutic technique effectively with children and whose work has been reviewed and checked to show that they have really made a difference to children they've been working with and they will be trained as trainers. So after that uh, you will be able to stand alone with a cohort of trainers and trained people and in a, like a snowball that can be then spread out without needing to, people to travel from London or Spain. That, that is really remarkable work, so thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to Fabian. Um, Fabian, so you've been working with the Rebel Business School in the UK and you lead a team in Colombia. Can you tell us a bit more about this exciting entrepreneurial revolutionary method that you use? Yes, sure. Well, also thank you for allowing us to, to talk a little bit about Rebel and especially the projects that we have been working on with uh, Children Change in, in Colombia. Uh, Children Change is also one of the first uh, situations where we have been able to prove that the relationship between our initial operation in the UK and what we're doing, not only in Colombia, but in Latin America, has a lot of potential. So basically, the Rebel Business School started 10 years ago in the UK, here in, in, in England. Uh, we are all about inclusive enterprise. We are about providing people 
with a different way of starting a business that doesn't involve falling into debt. We also allow them to educate by not spending a penny, always free. We have been running this, as I said, 10, for 10 years, 11 countries, four continents, 30,000 people, and never has anyone ever paid for a real business school. Um, there is a, a, a small uh, figure I would like to tell about Colombia. Last year in Colombia, 310,000 companies were started. This is uh, Chamber of Commerce information, so this is like formal companies. We don't know how many companies started in informality or how many businesses started in informality, but we do know that uh, Forbes and KPMG and all of the big news outlets uh, said that we had 41 companies that got investment. And this is a big deal in Colombia. We are the jewel of the crown in the Andean region with 41 companies with investment. 41 companies out of 310,000 is less than 0.01%. So there is something that traditional education is doing wrong by teaching people to start by finding investment, to start by building up a complex business plan, to start by finding a business loan. We turn the rules of the game around and we teach them to start by selling, by actually using money from their business to start not falling into debt. Um, and uh, Colombia is our first uh, Spanish-speaking country since 2021. We have been doing projects over there, working with Venezuelan migrants, with victims of the Colombian conflict, uh, rural communities, um, uh, prison populations, and we have found that the results are amazing compared to other regions of the world where we work. The resilience of uh, Latinos and, and, and Latinx and Colombian people in general, uh, the resourcefulness, the ingenuity, the creativity, uh, puts, uh, puts uh, these projects way ahead of other regions of the world, and we can't wait to see what else comes from what, what is coming next for, for, for our projects in Latin America. I mean, it's, it sounds incredible, and I could, I could definitely use some tips, but in, for now, um, could you tell us a bit more about the work you've been doing in partnership with CCC in La Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta? Yes, sure. You can come to one of the courses. They're completely free, by the way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, the work that, that we started with, which is going change Colombia this year, in June of this year, uh, we went to the Sierra Nevada, Minca. Um, if it's difficult to start a business in Colombia, in, in a city, if it's difficult to start it when you are, you know, uh, and, and I, I know this from experience, a white male, uh, you know, with a good education, how difficult can it be for somebody in a rural community um, that doesn't have the same education? It will be many, many, many times harder. So this 0.01% investment uh, rate is even lower. The probability of getting investment is even lower. Um, so uh, we went there, uh, gathered uh, together with the, the good people of Children Change and Mission Gaia, who worked at, at La Sierra Nevada, a 47 uh, kids and youngsters from three schools around the region and during four days taught them how to sell their products, how to test a simple business idea, how to build a website, how to sell on social media, how to build a logo and the results have frankly been amazing because out of these 47 people, 18% uh, made the first sale of their business ever. Yeah, and the global average that we get in, in working in, you know, Morocco, Namibia, New Zealand, France, is 10%. So they have doubled that, that figure, making the first sale ever. This is life-changing. Somebody makes the first sale of their business ever, this, it, it, the business might not go forward, but it already gives them confidence and it re already gives them a lot of self-trust and self-efficacy that what they want to do will be um, uh, very successful. We have amazing stories. I was seeing earlier that uh, you have Kainer over there. Kainer uh, went to the Rebel Business School course. He sold all of his production of coffee in two days. Uh, we have Anita, is a, a Kogui girl that, that attended the course and now she wants to take and teach the Rebel methodology in her community, uh, take it from there and, and teach it. And we have Asdrubal who is a, 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 a youngster that doesn't want to start a business and that's fine. He wants to be a programmer. So with the Rebel methodology, we help him to program some of the more complex things in the other people's uh, websites and just 
partner for uh, services. He can do that, and they can, you know, give uh, allow him to grow his portfolio. He has applied uh, to get programming uh, education in in, in, in 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 another place. So it doesn't have to be necessarily business, but it's just all about confidence and giving them uh, another idea of how to do things that is different from the traditional. It sounds really incredible. Very impressive. Both. Both of you are very inspiring, um, and it's so um, incredible to hear about this valuable work and also to hear how CCC are incorporating these new methodologies to help improve the lives of these children. So, thank you both so much for joining me, and thank you for your continued work with CCC. invite to the stage Maria Monica Gutierrez and Yvonne Velasquez. So thank you both for joining me. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Maria Monica Gutierrez, who is a Colombian, London-based singer and songwriter with a 13-year trajectory with her bands and with her solo project, Montañera. She's performed her music in more than 300 concerts across eight countries and has released nine albums. She currently works for several projects around mental health and music and is particularly interested in the power of music to improve the well-being of people. So, hi. Hi, Maria Monica. So you previously visited CCC projects in Colombia and you invited some of the children to attend your concert at the Teatro Colón in Bogotá. Can you share with us some highlights of that experience? Yes, of course. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here tonight. Um, yes, yeah, so I have this children's show in Colombia called Anaconda Dorada. And it was my first idea to like teach children about Colombia and teach them about how amazing Colombia is because when I was growing up, nobody taught me about how amazing Colombia was. So I was struggling a bit to like think of Colombia as a really cool place, which it is. So I did this children's show and I invited some of the children of CCC to come over to the Teatro Colón. We were a co-production with the theater, so initially I went to the Hogar Santa Fe and showed them, did a little like mini show for them, acoustic mini show, and then they came over to the Teatro Colón. So it was amazing, some of them, it was the first time they visited a theater and the Teatro Colón is an amazing place. Like it's really <coughs> astonishing like for, I don't know, tourists and everyone who comes there. It's just amazing so to see their faces and to see like the lightning, the dresses, the music, everything. It was a beautiful experience and yeah, it was lovely to have them there. It sounds amazing and now we've also had the incredible news that recently um, CCC will be starting a project for Colombian children living in London for the first time, as in a, the project is being done for the first time. Um, so first of all, a huge congratulations. Can you tell us a bit more about that project? Yeah, of course. So it's called Colombia Colores, and it's a project designed for children of the Colombian diaspora who live in London, children between the ages of 5 and 12. It's a free program, so they can come every Saturday and join us for artistic and creative sessions. They're all going to be delivered by myself. We're also going to have some guests, uh, artists from the Colombian community. And this is just a chance for children to learn more about Colombia, to meet other Colombian children, uh, to practice their Spanish, to learn how to sing, dance, make arts and crafts of Colombian traditional uh, things of our culture. So uh, the sessions are going to be super fun. They are free, so they are open to anyone from the community to have, uh, who has children and want to bring them over. So they are all very welcome. Uh, another incredible project, it's something that I would have loved to have had when I was younger, for sure. Um, I'm going to move on now to Yuan. <laughs> um, now, I'm sure everyone here knows Yuan. She's a CCC star. Um, she's been a volunteer for CCC for 20 years. She's worked at the Colombian Consulate and is an organizer of the Anglo-Colombian Society, whose events I've had the pleasure of attending myself. And now, Iwan, you are the Outreach Coordinator for Colombia Colores. Why do you think it's important to work with children from the Colombian diaspora and what impact do you want to see with this project? 
First of all, thank you very much, Anna. And I'm very, very pleased to be part of this pilot project that we are starting in very soon in a few weeks. Uh, and to be uh, to engage Colombian children from the diaspora. But why is it important? Let me let me start by saying, and I'm pretty sure that we all agree that Colombia is one of the most diverse countries in the world. Not only because of its diversity, but it's also its people and, and its culture. And um, we have uh, many of you don't know, but uh, we have six different regions, national regions in Colombia. Uh, from the Pacific, the Caribbean, the Andes, the Orinoco, the Amazon, and the insular regions, they all have their own characteristics. They all have their own customs. They all have their own gastronomy. They all have their own music. And it's precisely that, that it's, uh, it gives that, um, makes Colombia a very colorful, uh, Colombia color is very colorful, a very uh, special place uh, in, the, in the world. So, um, for, uh, for example, the, the, the rhythms, the dances from one region to another, they're all so different. And it's precisely, we can see in all of them the, the influences, the different influences from uh, the three continents, the indigenous, the, the Spanish, and the African influences, and that fusion that gives us that richness, and it's that for in that calling Colombia. That is the makeup of our country. And so what I believe is that it is very important to instill to the in children uh, of the diaspora uh, that knowledge uh, from a very early age. And uh, to tell them about that fascinating knowledge of, of, of and the richness of our country. And, and in that way, to um, continue to endure, to preserve, and, and, and to keep the colonial culture alive. Um, with Colo colonial colonists, we actually aim it to do that, just to, to give them a, a platform, first of all, and to give them the chance and, and the opportunity to, to learn more about their origin and in a way just to, to become uh, acquainted with the, the way they come from um, they or, or the parents or for both of their parents. Um, what we aim in, um, at Colombia Colores is, um, is actually to show what Colombia is and to engage them in, in a different um, cultural expressions, as Maria Monica mentioned, through art, through music, the environment, and, and to make sure that they, they will not only know uh, about the, the, the country, but it's, it's also to, to, to learn about the traditions and, and, and the values uh, of, of the, uh, that we have, and make them proud, make them proud of the roots. So, um, I, as um, Key point, I would have to say that uh, those workshops we want to run in Spanish, one to uh, improve their language skills, but also as as the way the, the door for that culture, that Colombian culture that we have, and uh, and also just to be like a, a platform just for for them to create and uh, share ideas and uh, about Colombia. Um, what was it? Oh, the impact. <laughs> <laughs> what is the impact? Oh, well, let me uh, say, I would say that um, I want to, to summarize it in, in three words, and, and I think it could be sowing a seed, sembrar una semilla. Uh, because uh, I think if, if we, at Colombia Flores we do that, we, we See, so that seed of knowledge and, and, and belonging so that, and to know about their country with, with the workshops with the kids. I think they will, we all together, uh, the kids especially, will grow uh, uh, with a much stronger sense of kinship, of uh, belonging, and an identity of the Colombian culture. And uh, not only that, but they, there will be also a place where they can create and, and nurture a relationship with other children and other peers and, and they see that they are in the same situation 
and then perhaps set in Paulin. Um, but I would like to perhaps say, if I finish there by saying that uh, something that I always say uh, that I really strongly believe that empower children change Colombia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. I couldn't agree more. Thank you both so much. I look forward to hearing and seeing how the project develops. Um, yes, I think you. <laughs> I think we are that corner there. Oh, yeah. of course, so if you have any questions, we more than pleased to answer any queries and tell you more about tell you about the project. Thank you. And now to finish the presentation, I'd like to invite Angela Carreño, who is the director of Children Change Colombia, and she will be sharing some case studies that show the impact of the projects in the lives of these children and their communities. Hello, good evening everyone. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'm so thankful for, to each one of you for being here. It's amazing to be here and be able to see what we are doing thanks to your support. You are here because you have been one way or another involved with our organization. You are supporting in our IT, or you are our photographer, or you are part of the team, the orange team, a trustee, a donor. All of you make this, all these children are uh, helping, being able to do that. So thank you very much again for being with us. Um, as you know, there are several tables in the back where you can go when we finish the short presentation and talk with our staff and volunteers about the different projects we are implementing. Also, I would like to share some heartwarming stories so you can see how the life of these children is in fact. So, let's talk about Cristina. Cristina is 12 years old and she lives in Rio San Juan, Chocó. She lives by the Rio San Juan. To go to the closer town, she has to take a chalupa, a small boat, and it's super expensive because the gas is very expensive to go to one side to the other. She has never left her area. She lives in a rural area where there's electricity sometimes, even in one of the areas of the world that has most rain in the world, there is no running water. And she dreams with a peaceful country, where she lives is one of the places in Colombia where the violence is the worst. And she has been part of our projects on ethnoculture, so she's learning how to be Afro-Colombian in this specific area, supported by the Ministry of Education, but with all what it means to be Afro-Colombian. Also, she has been part of um, our project of Football for Peace. So this is a new project we have created to support boys and girls to be protected from sexual exploitation because they are illegal, mining um, businesses around them. And over there are the chungos, where they are exploited sexually, the local women and men of the region, and children are at risk. So she's being protected for that, and also for forced recruitment, because there is LN, paramilitaries, and different bands that are kidnapping and forcing the children to be in the war. So thanks to this project, she could be safe, learn a sport, learn peace building, and be saved. Or the study of Kainer, Fabian was mentioning Kainer, if you have been following us, you saw his story in our BBC Appeal with Michael Palin. When Kainer was two or three years old, his dad was killed, and her mom couldn't cope with the situation, leave him and his three older siblings with his grand. They have a really difficult moments how to survive there from the Sierra Nevada Santa Marta. And now, with the support we're giving at school, he's starting her own business. We are also have some partnerships with universities in Bogota, so he can go to university through an online system with our support. So it's one of the phases of how can we impact children that have a really difficult situation because of the context they were born. Sandra, she was based in the, she was in the streets. She was involved in guns and abusing of substances. And then she starts, she was taken to protected by the government. And there we have a program with her through Tiempo de Juego. And she became a leader. The, the teachers of the course understood that she had leadership skills and helped her to become stronger, to become, to have dreams. And once she left 
the center, she became part of the team. And now she's working with children, with young girls that were in situation when she was, well, in the same situation she had when she was younger, and she can teach them that there is another path. There is another way to grow, to look forward for a better future, and to support the society. And finally, let me talk about Luis. Luis was one of the first children, children change Colombia support. When he was seven, he escaped his house, he came from Bogota, a very humble home, and started living in the streets. Over there he learned how to steal, he learned to consume drugs, and to have a really, really, really difficult life to live in the streets. And one of the first projects we had that was with these children that live in the sewers. Thanks to this, he left the streets, now he's a lawyer, he has three children, and has a very successful life. So, this is just some of the stories of Children Change Colombia that have been 32 years supporting children in Colombia, their families and their communities. And we are able to do that thanks to all your support. So, thank you very much again to be here. Please, if you want to be much more involved with us, we are here. You can find us, our emails everywhere. I'm here, I can tell you, what you can meet the staff. Please get much more involved with us. There are so many ways to support us. You have seen the panels of different people. Maria Monica was our supporter and then we just dream with a project and now it came through. So there's so many ways that you could be involved. Doesn't have to be money, but if you have money, it's very welcome too. <laughs> so, so please enjoy this evening. Thank you again for coming. And we would like to close this presentation with a documentary. This is of uh, Denise. She's an indigenous girl of our project Caribe. She lives in La Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta. And she has a very story to tell to you. So again, thanks for coming. Enjoy the evening and be in touch. Son a las seis de la mañana. Estamos buscando desde muy temprano el tucán que se posa siempre allá en el fondo del árbol, en, en el tope. Y este sí es su canto. Es el favorito porque lo que quiere decir o transmitir es un llamado y es lo que se hace comúnmente en las comunidades indígenas de acá. Ah, ah, sí, morder, hombre. Mi nombre es Denis Hill. Tengo 17 años y pertenezco a la comunidad Uigua. Estudió en un colegio rural. Estaba unos cinco minutos de mi casa y aprovecho que el colegio no me queda tan lejos como algunos otros niños. Ok, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. ¿Cómo se llama? Hoy vamos a aprender las palabras descriptivas. El inglés es muy importante. También me gusta el arte, el turismo y todo lo que tenga que ver con la ecología, la siembra y todo eso. Y algunas veces como mujer indígena tienes que seguir las reglas de todos y casarte, tener hijos. Mi madre fue la primera mujer Kogi indígena que empezó a estudiar en su comunidad y pues siempre tuvo como reproches. Entonces tenemos ese objetivo de cambiar estos pensamientos, estos puntos de vista de algunos otros pueblos. Mi nombre es Wendy y soy profesora en una institución de la Sierra Nevada. Para mí no soy únicamente una profesora. Intento demostrarles que siendo mujer, siendo joven, se puede llegar a hacer muchas cosas. Los obstáculos de vivir en una comunidad rural son, primero, el desplazamiento. O sea, muchos chicos tienen que caminar cuatro horas para llegar al colegio, entonces llegan ya bastante cansados. También muchos chicos allá perdieron sus padres, perdieron su familia por el conflicto armado. Entonces intento siempre motivarlos a crecer y a ver nuevos horizontes. 
En la institución tenemos clases no tan convencionales, son talleres activos como el aviturismo, agroecología, porque es una zona bastante visitada y rica para los extranjeros. Buenos días chicos. Buenos días. ¿Cómo están? ¿Alguno sabe cuánta especie de aves tenemos en Colombia? Más de 50. ¿Qué dicen ustedes? 300. ¿300? ¿Por aquí? 200. Bueno, bien. Colombia tiene 2,100 especies de aves. Es el primer puesto a nivel mundial. En esta mañana estábamos haciendo algunas charlas sobre la importancia de las especies de aves que tenemos acá. La idea es que los estudiantes se den cuenta que las aves no solamente son como eh, aves de adornos, son especies de aves que también están cumpliendo una función en el ecosistema. Si no existiera este ave, todos los ríos, las montañas, alrededor de las casas donde vivimos, tendría un olor horrible y nadie quisiera vivir con ese olor. Gracias a ellos es que ellos descomponen y como ellos tienen unos jugos gástricos, ellos pueden consumir ese, esa esa carne que está podrida y lo transforma en abono. Listo. Y también estamos haciendo una actividad y una práctica con los estudiantes sobre el tema del turismo de avifauna. Y a través de esas actividades lo que hacemos es activar como que ellos se sientan dueños de los lugares, que se sientan que hacen parte de la naturaleza. Chicos, mira acá arriba. ¿Alguien me puede decir qué especie de aves es? Semillero. Un semillero. En inglés le dicen yellow belly, es yellow belly, es que esta parte que es amarillo, amarillo. es toma agua amarillo. Listo chicos, vámonos. Si nosotros les seguimos incentivando a que ellos tengan una conciencia más de ecologista, ellos podrían venir siendo como sus futuros guías en la zona para que puedan generar ingreso tanto en la comunidad como en sus casas. Me gusta el colegio, me gusta aprender, porque tiene ese sentido de cómo abrirme muchas puertas. En mi futuro, con el turismo, me gustaría guiar, explicar lo que consiste en mi territorio, lo que soy yo y lo que me ha convertido este lugar.